Hello and welcome to the second part of the PC build. So today we're going to be looking at the power supply, cabling and finally switching on. So hopefully everything goes well. So let's get started. So the power supply finally arrived. We have a Be Quiet Straight Power 11, 750 watt modular power supply. This should be ample to power the system. So I'll look at the back and it shows you all the connections that we have available. And we have plenty of connections, more than we actually need for this system. But with it being modular, you can chop and change to however you want to configure your system. So let's have a look inside the box. This box is quite heavy, so the power supply must be quite heavy. So I'm thinking it must be quality. So first bunch of modular cables. The mains connection, another bunch of modular cables, and the Euro power plug, and um, some screws and some cable ties. So we won't be needing the Euro plug as we're in the UK. So let's get the power supply out and let's have a look. A little packet of silica gel and out comes the power supply. It's looking good. As you can see, it's a bee quiet with one of its signature Be Quiet fans and there's all the modular plugs so plenty of plugs so we need to decide which plugs we're going to use in this system as we don't need all of them so we're going to unwrap them take out the plugs that we actually need and we can put the spare ones away back in the box so after sorting through we have the P8 for the motherboard we have the P two P4s which makes a P8 for the motherboard motherboard requires two we have the main ATX supply and we have the supply for the VGA, which we'll be going in later. So we need to take the both sides off on this. And there's a look at the, the um, LED and fan control board that comes with the case. all pre-wired and with a load of wires coming off it that we need to find homes for on the motherboard as you can see but those should be straightforward enough so first thing we take off the bracket at the rear for holding our power supply And we screw this onto the power supply and then we can fit the power supply back into the case. So there's the power supply screwed on. Just one last last screw to fit. Just whilst we do that, 
just like to mention that over 80% of the people that watch my videos are not subscribed. Go on, click that subscribe button, click the notification bell. It helps the channel out and it helps me out. And you get a big thank you. So we can slot the power supply back in. Now you may have noticed we've not fitted the pump in the radiator yet. Well, we haven't done that because it's going to be a little bit tight up at the top of the motherboard to actually fit the two P8 connectors in. So we've decided to put the power supply for the motherboard in first, or should we say the connections, the wires. And once we've got that in place, we're going to fit the pump and radiator into place. Because I didn't want to fit the radiator in and then find out we have to take it back out again. There was a few reviews online about the case being a little bit tight for space and yes we can see that but that's what you get for buying the smaller case but everything fits it's just just a little bit tight that's all so there's our two p8 connectors in and routed around the back for cable management and now we can look at the pump and radiator. Now the pump actually isn't in the CPU block. The pump is actually on the um, the pipes going to the radiator, which is quite a unique design. So there's our radiator, the Be Quiet Pure Loop 2FX. So we've got two connections that need to be connected on that. One for the RGB, one for the pump. And we need to fit our fans to the radiator as well. More RGB fans. Now this this radiator and, and pump assembly did come with its own controller. And we did try using the two spare ports on the controller that was on the back. But we actually found out that all the fans obviously ramp up. Which is okay, but we decided to opt for separate controls for the radiator fans. So we did actually fit the controller that come with the radiator. So we can individually control the pump fans and the radiator fans and the case fans independently. So we're trying to be careful not to damage anything. So we've got one person holding the radiator into place and I'm just screwing the screws in just so we can get it into place and get it semi-secured and then we can worry about final positioning and putting the screws into place and actually lining the radiator up so there it's just got some some screws in so we'll put all the screws in and we're going to put the magnetic filter back on the top and that's it that job's done so now for the CPU block. So we've got some thermal compound that come with it. Says it's enough for one to two applications. And they were right, it was just enough. So a nice pea-sized blob in the center. And that was it, it was used. So we need to remove this protective film off the bottom of the CPU block. Right. 
reveals a nice flat shiny surface then we're off, off it up to the CPU and we can just give it a little wiggle around just to start spreading the thermal compound And then we start to tighten, so we do a little bit at the bottom one, and then a little bit at the top, top one, and just keep rotating between the two until they're both screwed correctly. It won't allow you to over tighten it, but we don't want to tighten one side up and have all the thermal compound squeeze out of one side. We just want to tighten it down gradually and evenly. So the CPU block goes down as level as possible. So I'll be nice and gentle with this. Until it can turn no further. And that's it done. That's enough. There, so that should be attached perfectly. So that's looking good. So we've connected up the CPU opt for the pump. So we've got control over the pump and we've connected the first of the RGB headers to the addressable connection. Now the next big cable that needs to go in is the main ATX power. It's a little bit fiddly as that 4 pin plug hooks underneath the main plug and obviously there's a lot of wires, they're quite stiff. But once it goes into place and it's cable managed we won't have to worry about it again. So it should push down and click into place, and it has done. And as it routed through the back, nicely cable managed, nicely hidden out of the way. And there's a view of the back of the power supply, and it's starting to get a bit of a nest down there with all its cables. So now we need to work out the cables that come from the case itself. The front panel USB, the USB-C, the RGB header, and obviously the power switch so we've got those connected up and all cable managed out of the way so I think we're almost ready for switch on so we'll turn the power supply on and we'll hit the power button and pray it comes on and sure enough lights up fan spin ram lights up obviously we've not got anything synchronized yet that's to come we didn't get anything on the monitor screen initially but that's not a problem with these boards as they train themselves to the memory and it reboots a few times on the initial startup just so it can learn what parts are on the board and learn what memory's in there so eventually after a few restarts we managed to get an image on the monitor so first thing we're updating the BIOS to the latest BIOS which at the time of recording was F4A and the original BIOS was F2 which is the initial release so we used Q flash inside the BIOS to flash this so everything went quite normally until this happened
got a black screen for a while whilst it retrained itself, obviously because of a new bias flash. And it did take quite a while to come back on, but you have to be patient with these things. We've got a flash of the Gigabyte logo. I think another restart. There's another restart. So you shouldn't panic when this happens. But then we got this. The UEFI boot agent. And we were like, oh dear, what's gone wrong? So we did a quick Googling. And somebody suggested hard power down and power up a couple of times. This didn't work. We tried resetting a couple of times and this didn't work. So we scratched our heads for a little while. And then I decided to pull out the USB drive that I'd used for the flash file. And after then it booted up. So what I'm thinking is that because there was no operating system on the SSD, it was trying to boot from the USB drive. And obviously there was no bootable file there, so it was doing this. So I think once we've got an operating system on the SSD, this shouldn't happen again. But after pulling out the USB drive, this went away and we were able to boot. And get back into the BIOS again. And set up some basic settings like the memory and check the fan curves. And enable XMP for the memory, for the memory timings. But this was quite a worrying few minutes, thinking what's gone wrong with it. But it was just as simple as the USB drive being still plugged in. So we get it powered up and we get back to the BIOS again. And we, we can then proceed with the rest of the system build, software install, getting the fan sorted, getting it synchronised. But for now, everything seems to work. RGB's working. Pumps are working. The system's actually come on and it's booted. So we're quite happy. Anyway, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next episode.